This will be a Blind Willie Johnson lesson on Nobody's Fault But Mine. And the tuning for this song is Vesta Pool, which is open D. Um, that will be below in the info section. And um, it will just be played in open position. One thing about Blind Willie Johnson is that I'd say he was the best slide guitarist of all time. And one of the things that makes his music so difficult to learn and which is sometimes why I often hesitate to make a lesson on him is because it's just full of these nuances that only he could really nail and it's just so in imitatable that it's a challenge to learn but if you get somewhat close it's really rewarding so I'll just cover um, the first bit of the song um, I think that's probably about the first 15 or 20 seconds, and if you learn those moves, you practically learn the entire song. So what I'll do is play it once, and um, then we'll get into the lesson. I should mention right off the bat that this song has an alternating bass strings almost throughout the song and you'll just want to mute that just a bit with your right palm and um, so that'll just be a given and we'll just go over the, uh, the treble strings part and once you learn the treble strings part then um, you can go ahead and add in that alternating bass so with regards to the lead part he starts out with this So that's a slide in to the 3rd fret, then he pulls off. Then on the 5th fret he slides up to the 7th. So 5, 7, and back to the 5. Then another pull off, open. And when you do those pull offs, it's really easy with the slide. You just, the moment you release the string, it'll sound out the open note. Then he's got this little move, 3-4-3. Three, three. Open. Then you slide in on the 5th fret, up to the 5th uh, string up to the 5th fret. And getting Blind Willie Johnson's stuff down is, um, um, one of the things that makes it difficult is that he plays so clean and everything is completely in tune and there are no bum strings sounded out. And that makes it really difficult to play and um, you'll notice that when you try and play this part, oftentimes when you're starting out, and I have this problem, you end up getting this. And you don't want that top string to sound out when you do this slide. Otherwise it sounds, well it is wrong. So two things um, can be done to, to prevent that and only isolate that fifth string. Number one, when you're playing Blind Willie Johnson, only have your slide on the top two strings. Unless he was deliberately playing the bass string, say in Dark Was The Night. He'd only have his slide on the top two strings, I would guess, because he never, uh, if he did play a bum note, which was extremely rare, he'd never have it sound on the um, bass strings. So top two strings, the next thing that you can do is when you have that note, the moment you slide in and pluck that, and by the way, you'd slide in probably from the third fret. I go in to pluck that third fret to slide in. Immediately when I do, I mute the top string with my middle finger and then pluck it with my pointer finger simultaneously.
And that'll be um, kind of uh, challenging to learn at first, probably. Um, it took me a while. Um, definitely to keep the string, the slide on the top two strings is kind of odd, and it'll um, take a little bit of work for coordination. And that muting thing, you'll need to get that down to play pretty much all of Blind Willie Johnson's tune, so this is a good time to start. So that's the first part. And then what he does is slide into the octave on the 12th fret. And when you're doing this, um, well, I often think of his slide work as brush strokes. He's always moving the slide, and that what's make, that's part of what makes him so difficult to play, is that it was so nuancy and so um, artistic in how he always be moving a slide, imitating vocal inflections, that you really need to catch all those small details. And one of those details is catching the first pluck as, he, as you're moving the slide into the 12th fret. So you've got that first pluck going in, and then you pluck the top string at the 12th fret. It's different than going like this. You're moving the slide. Then you go down to the 10th, and then back into the 12th, and into is important because you want to catch the note as you're sliding in. And then you slide into the 7th fret of the top string. And Blind Willie Johnson would often do those little approaches from below. You've got a few of them right there. And of course in that beginning he would go approach from below and then another one. So all of those details are really important. What he does then is basically play the same thing. And then on the fifth fret he'll go And this will take practice to get fast, but he'll go 5th, 7th, 5th, 4th. And then he does the same move from the intro. to get his sound is the rhythm and particularly on that part he puts a little more emphasis on beats two and four and um, I'll emphasize that right now um, exaggerated I should say and once again and so um, one of the things that that kind of directs you to do is to hold that, hold those beats on two and four, and you can, you'll be able to feel it. So then you don't play it like this. It's more. And then when you add in the alternating bass, you can really hear it coming together to get closer to his sound. And so um, those are just a bunch of things that you can do to help out um, getting as close as you can to what he played. And that will pretty much cover the entire song. Those will be pretty much all the moves that he uses. He'll play a few variations, one of my favorites, I'll just, I'll mention this one. Um, so he'll, um, when he begins his verse, He'll slide in, starting on the 3rd fret, into the 6th fret. And that'll be on the top string. And once again, um, just another reminder, slide should be only on the top 2 strings. 
So slide in, back to the third, open, and then mute the string and pluck the fifth and slide into that fifth fret. And then he'll go into his normal thing. <laughs> 